business owners, and executives from around the valley. This is Business Leaders with Lance Cardoza. Hello, everybody. Good morning, and thank you for watching Business Leaders. I'm Lance Cardoza, and my guest today, I'm very, uh, very excited to have this gentleman on. We're going to talk about a book that he's put out, and he's not only put out one book, he's put out many books. And I also want to talk about an entrepreneur on fire, a serial entrepreneur. And today I have the CEO of Electronic Recyclers International, John Shigarian. And John, you've been a mentor of mine, as you know, and I've told you that That's many true. years. And so early in my show, Business Leaders, and here you are. And uh, you're a globetrotter, and I know in the, your businesses and everything that uh, you tend to touch, tends to flourish, but you're going to tell the truth today and say that's not absolutely true. Right. <laughs> but there's right. challenges in being an entrepreneur. And, and right. with uh, ERI, Electronic Recyclers International, there's some uh, exciting stories to tell. Sure. Thank you. It's an honor to be here today, Lance, with you. I just love being with you. I appreciate it. Tell, tell our viewers what Electronic Recyclers International is. Yeah, we're the uh, largest electronic waste recycling company in North America. And we were born right here in Fresno, as you well know. You were with us when we were born. Uh, back then, it was the great mayor, Alan Autry, and he directed us to where we should be looking for our first location, which was on East Avenue. And we opened up in April of 2005. In our first month of business, we recycled approximately 10,000 pounds of electronic waste. Uh, fast forward about uh, 17 years later, 16 and a half years later, Last month, we recycled almost 20 million pounds. But now we're not just on East Avenue. Um, we have about 350,000 feet here in Fresno and about 300 employees. But we also have about 1,000 employees across America in 10 buildings, and we cover every zip code. Wow. And when you talk about electronic recycling, electronic waste, uh, there's, and a lot of people don't realize this, there's gold. Cool. There's commodities, yep. and those commodities are reused and yep. repurposed, and I know that's a big uh, focus of the company. Yeah. And talking about repurposing. We're living in a generational time shift right now, Lance, where we're moving from a linear to a circular economy. And ERI is one of the great, very low visibility, untold circular economy, what is called ESG stories right now. And what do I mean by that? When we say we recycle responsibly, 20 million pounds of electronic waste a month. What I really mean by that is all the materials come in and two things, one of two things happen. We either shred it in the world's largest shredders, which you've come in and you've done great, great videographies of, of our shredders right here in Fresno, and turn it into commodities. So the commodities out of those shredders are shredded in clean glass in order of volume. Mm -hmm. Steel, plastic, aluminum, copper, gold, silver, lead, palladium all those materials go for beneficial reuse to smelters who then repurpose this material into new products around the planet. So we're zero waste, zero landfill, zero emission. The other thing that happens is electronics, if the, if the uh, client allows, can be fixed up, retested, repackaged, and resold again as well. So repurposing. Repurposing for, and Correct. some big box stores that you do a lot of repurposing for. Correct. So it's a, again, it keeps these materials out of the landfills. There's no reason electronics should go in our landfills anymore when you could run a zero waste, zero landfill, zero emission type of facility and keep those ha potentially hazardous materials out of landfills. Because once they go into a landfill, they get rained upon. There's arsenic, lead, beryllium, cadmium, mercury in these materials. They get into our ecosystem, plant, animals and eventually make their ways back to human and there's no good things that will come out if those things get into our ecosystem and environment. So most companies and when you look at a regulation or what they're trying to uh, regulatory issues towards companies you're one of the leaders that helped develop some of those regulatories towards e-waste and making sure that there was a, a watchdog effort right. to be able to properly repurpose, but properly, like you said, keep it out of our ecosystem right. and do that. And why was that important to you? Because as a lot of CEOs, they, they look at the bottom line as the green, but sometimes they don't look at the future. And, right. and it was very important to you. You know, it's funny you said that, Lance. When you started working with us on ERI, when we first launched this company in April of 05, 
there's only three states that had landfill bans on electronic waste. Mm -hmm. Now approximately 25 states. So we made a huge lobbying effort with others to help lobby to ban electronics from landfills across the United States. And now that about 25 states have those bans, the nice thing is that business and other government entities and large institutions have taken the bull by the horns and said, listen, we want to do the right thing wherever we are, wherever we do business, and we don't want to send electronics to landfills or shipped in containers abroad. We want to do the right thing and responsibly recycle these materials domestically. And, and that is still uh, probably, I'm sure, I've been out of touch of, with it, but that is probably still a serious issue that our world deals with is improper uh, e-waste recycling uh, and with a company like Electronic Recyclers International that you're you're focused on leading in making those uh, safe recycling methods uh, but is it still a big issue in our world to where it's illegally being recycled I heard at one time CRT is being dumped in the ocean and all these things that you were sort of a watchdog effort and we've got to stop this yes well according to the UN 17 percent of all the electronics that are used on the planet are responsibly recycled. That means there's 83% that's still problematic. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like it's the top of the second inning, even though this business is 17 years old, our opportunity with our competitors and collaborators mm -hmm. is to go get the rest of the 83% responsible, re responsibly recycle it and do good, make the world a better place. Absolutely, and I know you've been a big leader of that and I know that uh, you're a leader in, in many ways, and I know you've put out a book, and we'll talk about that when we come back from the break, but uh, the insecurity of everything. And uh, you put out other books, too. John Shigarian, uh, CEO of Electronic Recyclers here on Business Leaders, uh, wanted to uh, talk about also how did you get your start? It didn't all start. Uh, that I'm going to work in the e-waste business and you came out of the ground and then wanted to do that. You had a big long road before that so we want to talk about that as you as an entrepreneur. Top of the show I mentioned uh, a serial entrepreneur and as a serial entrepreneur you've always been one that I've been very uh, impressed with because uh, as you talk to Kevin Dillon and Aaron Blum I'm sure they'll tell you uh, there's days he drives me crazy but you are focused and driven and uh, very excited when you latch onto something. So I want to talk about some of those uh, exciting other ventures you do. Stay with us right here on Business Leaders on KMPH Fox 26. More to come. Don't go away. Business Leaders with Lance Cardoza. Welcome back, everybody, to Business Leaders. Make sure you check out businessleaders.tv to catch past episodes like this episode today. CEO of Electronic Recyclers International, co-founder, and also uh, you've uh, the chairman of the organization as well. You've, you've founded a lot of different companies, a lot of different ventures. Uh, and before the break, we were talking about your book. And uh, before we end this segment, we have some exciting news. We'll talk about the book. Sure. So you're going to want to stay tuned and find out about that because you have a chance to possibly get a copy yourself. And we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, you didn't start in e-waste. No. They probably didn't even know e-waste existed or was going to be something in the future. No. But talk, talk to me about growing up and what, what fired that entrepreneurial spirit in you yeah. as a young person. My mom was a social worker. My dad was a, an entrepreneur himself. And uh, growing up, I wanted to be a, a, a jockey like you see in the Kentucky Derby. Yeah. I was already too big. My dad told me when I was 10 I was too big. So yeah. I then set out to become a driver in harness racing. I became the youngest driver of standard bred racehorses in, in North America. Yeah. And uh, one of the great horses that we had in our barn was called Noble Darby. And Noble Darby went on to win some very, very big stake races. And eventually a breeding group out of Belgium came across the pond and wanted to buy him for breeding purposes. And they did. And we became friends with this family. It was the Hayen family from Belgium. And they invented one of the most aerodynamic and most successful windmills that were being used in Belgium. Hmm. And my father said, why don't we bring them to the United States? And we did. And my dad, with the Hayans, were, was one of the first people to ever put up uh, uh, institutionalized windmill farms for energy purposes. Oh, okay. From 77 to 1980, when President, then President Ron Reagan got rid of the investment tax credits 
in alternative energy sources. So that being involved with my dad in his business ventures and seeing how he did things and put things together and understanding the importance of alternative energy sources with Windmaster and our windmill farms um, really set the seeds for m making money but making the world a better place at the, at the same time. And one day when I went into the business of electronic waste recycling after doing other things in between, it all came together and made sense. It yeah. didn't make sense. When you're young, you don't know where your journey's gonna go, but you realize where the seeds of, of different ideas come from. And definitely my dad and Windmaster was the beginnings of ERI. Sort of uh, planted that seed for you. Planted the seed. And then marketing wise too, I mean you, I think with Donnie Deutsch and uh, you were on his program, yeah. you have a Forbes magazine, have you been uh, well, not only a globetrotter just in business, but in the media and yeah. telling the story of e-waste, you've been a great marketer to bringing it to the forefront as, uh, and still, like you said, there's only 17% uh, that's being uh, recycled, so there's a big gap there still to close. True, and you're, well, thank you for those kind words, Lance, but the truth is people also want to back authentic leaders. Most people know I'm the co-founder with Father Greg Boyle of Homeboy Industries. When we started, it was called Homeboy Tortillas, mm -hmm. and then we morphed it into Homeboy Industries. We started with Homeboy Tortillas in Grand Central Market, uh, which was very successful, and then that became Homeboy Industries. Um, that led then to financialaid.com, which I started in 1998, the year Google was founded with the O'Brien brothers, mm -hmm. Mike and Matt O'Brien. And that became, we democratized student lending online and sold that to CIT and EDLG in 2004. Uh, so people want to know when leaders say they want to do well, want to make a profit, but also make the world a better place, you got to also not only talk to talk, but walk the walk. And when you have the real life credentials and you're seen as authentic, people will lean in and listen then. Absolutely. And that's why I've been drawn to you as I've met several business leaders, but I really look at you and, and life is not always perfect. And there's businesses that I'm sure you can uh, give us a, a whole uh, lecture on what yeah. not to do in business. And, yeah. and uh, sometimes it might work for one that might not work for another. You've experienced that. What would you tell a young entrepreneur, especially this day and age, yeah. where there are challenges, but there's also huge benefits out there for the ones that really hustle when they get out there and work. What would you tell that young mind or that person sitting at home right now watching KMPH Fox 26 and maybe has an idea, but they haven't gone out there and taken the risk? What would you say? If a kid from Queens like me who grew up part of our childhood Part of it, not the entire part, was we were a little bit of our time on welfare. So we didn't have all the best of everything all the time. If a kid like me can make it, and my brother also is massively successful as, a, as an employment attorney. So we both came out of nowhere and put our mind to it, our energy to it. Um, anyone can make it, but you got to really want it, and you got to want it bad. Mm -hmm. And... You just can't ever give up. So many things are going to get in the way. People always want to hear my highlight reel. And I said, well, why don't I first tell you the real reel yeah. of really what happens mm -hmm. and all the disappointments and the loneliness of the journey. It's a crushing loneliness when you're on the road, uh, on planes and in uh, hotels. You, a usual year, pre-COVID, I was on the road between 150 and 200 nights a year. You and I would text each other at any any time and you say, where are you today? And I'd say Seoul, South Korea, yeah. New York City, uh, Frankfurt, Germany. It could be anywhere. Mm -hmm. And it all sounds wonderful, but the truth be known is um, it's a lonely journey. But if you want it that bad, anyone could have success. And you got to also understand what success means to you. For me, it means always creating businesses that not only have monetary value and make a profit, but also really do make a difference in the communities that they serve and on the greater good, make the world a better place. Beautiful, beautifully said. And when we come back, John, I want to talk about your book. Also for the viewers here on KMPH Fox 26, stay with us. We're going to take a short break, and you can find out how you can get a copy of this book. Absolutely free, a gift of John Shigarian. We'll be right back. You're watching Business Leaders. Business Leaders with Lance Cardoza. 
Welcome back everybody to Business Leaders. I'm Lance Cardoza. And before the break, we were talking about how you can get the book and then John will talk to us about the book. It's called The Insecurity of Everything. Right. And uh, John, I, it, this sort of, I saw your first book at marketing right. and I took a look at that. And then I took a look at this book here. We could take a shot of it there if you want. And uh, this book here, you're gonna get a copy of it by going to businessleaders.tv and you can see that on the bottom of the screen, businessleaders.tv. Uh, go on there and fill out uh, a message to us and say, I want to get a copy. And the first 100 viewers of Business Leaders have an opportunity to, to get, get a free book. copy. A free. a free copy. There's not that many things free these no, days. No, there is yes. not anything free, really. <laughs> yeah. So, and uh, talk to us about the book. Because this yeah. sort of this book, I see some of the names and I'm like, these are people in the journey. Yeah. Uh, the, we wrote it. Uh, with my partners, Aaron Blum, Kevin Dillon, Brendan Egan, and my wife and myself, we all contributed to this book, including Kate Fazzini, who sits on our board uh, of directors at ERI, and she's one of the top cybersecurity specialists in the world. And why we wrote this book is, Fortune Magazine wrote an article on us uh, about four years ago, Lance. Mm -hmm. It was called Dead But Not Forgotten. And the last sentence of the article, the lead writer on cybersecurity and fortune, Robert Hackett wrote this article. And the last sentence, he said, it turns out environmental waste is not only an environment, um, electronic waste is not only an environmental hazard, but a cybersecurity one as well. And so, when we got in the business, e-waste was the fastest growing solid waste stream in the world. And even in, in spite of our success, it's now the fastest growing solid waste stream by an order of magnitude of five times to the number two fastest growing solid waste stream, which happens to be plastic. Hmm. What does that mean? How do we get here? Well, you have the internet of things, Ring, Alexa, Nest, the wearables that we all wear. Yeah. Cars are now computers on wheels. I never dreamed when we started this company mm -hmm. that Tesla would be a client, that Ford would be a client that CarMax would be a client. And also now our white goods at home also now have televisions or hardware in them containing data on our families and, our, and ourselves. So we wrote this book because the truth be known is it's not only an environmental imperative to responsibly recycle your electronic waste, but it's also a personal imperative to protect the data for yourself, for your family, and uh, the business or organization you work for because all of our electronics contain tremendous amount of personal identifiable information it's called PII mm -hmm. and even with the best intentions you don't want to get your electronics in the hands of the bad guys and let them reverse engineer your bank account your social security number any of your personal information even where you go every day yeah and we're talking about even simple like your phone your device, everything that everything that you carry or have, or sometimes on a home computer that you don't know, can have this data. And I've been very impressed with the company too, because as companies come to ERI too, there's a data destruction is one of the biggest things you offer to a company. Eight out of new, eight out of ten new clients come to us for for cybersecurity hardware data destruction. So if you think of shred it, shredding data on paper, Lance. Mm -hmm. Think about us, we're the largest hardware data destruction company in North America. A lot of people don't think about it and then they put themselves in par peril if they irresponsibly get rid of their old e-waste by throwing it up on Craigslist, eBay, or just giving it away without destroying the data. That's why we wrote the book. It's not meant to make money, it's an educational tool. Mm -hmm. And like I said, eight out of 10 new clients come to us to protect the data they're very thrilled that a byproduct is that we're protecting the environment also, but data security, this is the other side of software and cybersecurity. We're the hardware part of the equation. Uh, so, so, and viewers, business leaders, you get 100 people. So if you go to businessleaders.tv, we're gonna send you this book and we'll get that out to you, the insecurity of everything. So as you're listening to the program and the CEO of Electronic Recyclers International talking about these topics, and like you said, only 17% of the country, there's a lot of room for growth, not only for your company, right. but really for our country, 
uh, in the world to have a better planet, making sure we're not putting this uh, poison, if you will, right. into the ground. That's right. And that you're going to keep your data secure because that's one of the biggest concerns. I've been to e-waste events to where right. it was a recycling event, and you do. Uh, there's a little old guy, and he's grabbing his stuff out, and it's been sitting in the garage for four that's years. Right. He's worried about what's happening to his hard drive, and that, that's why with ERI, you know that that's a high priority. That's being shredded right away because the hard drives are removed, shredded separately. Uh, and for some companies, very secure in your building facility, right? If, if the Department of Justice and Homeland Security trust us, your listeners and viewers can trust us as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Where do people, because every city, every municipality probably has different regulations. Quickly, we're wrapping up here, but what, uh, where do people go? To have their waste recycled. You can go to retailers in town, you can go to Best Buy, Staples, you can also go to Salvation Army, and then also in Fresno you can bring it to our facility and we'll take it off your hands during business hours as well. Oh great, great. And they can find us, uh, all the information on your website, and your website is? www.eridirect.com. John, we could talk all day. There's tons of stuff and, and I know your story but there's always something new and I appreciate you being on the program. And uh, just want to let everybody know that they can get that copy from Mr. Shigarian, and uh, we'll get that sent out to the first 100 people. you got to go to businessleaders.tv. Thanks again, John. I appreciate it. And we will see you on uh, Tuesday at 11 o'clock next week. Make sure you join us right here on Business Leaders with KMPH Fox 26.